This is the Juro Synchro Podcast. We're recording today from three different locations, starting off with myself in Great Britain, then heading over to France with one of our guests, and then traveling all the way over to Switzerland with my other guest. Today, I'm joined by Dylan Younger from Team Zulu and Team Starlight Skater Dario Nocella. Happy New Year and welcome to the Juro Synchro Podcast, Episode 3, Season 2. Today from Wales, in the United Kingdom, with Sophie Ekstrom Gab. Welcome to the Jura Synchro Podcast. I'm really excited to have you guys as my first ever guests. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, say hi. Hi, thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you for being here. So you both still um, skate, and I know at some points you have been in junior and senior levels. So just thought we'd start off with a little introduction. So Dylan, I know you are a current member of Team Zulu uh, in France. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your skating career? Yeah, of course. I started skating at when I was seven, and I was in another, in another country, uh, cities. I lived in uh, Louvier. Uh, close to Louvier in north of France. And uh, I started uh, to skate in synchronized skating and figure skating when I was 13 or 14, something like that. So really late. And uh, so I begin in novice and then in mixed stage category. And I continue at uh, in figure skating too. And then when I was 18, I moved on to Lyon to skate for one year in uh, the junior team Les Azou. And then I go to uh, Les Zulu for now my fifth year. Amazing. And, you know, we've done quite a few things together in the past as well, yeah. little camps and skated together, so a very familiar face. Yeah, when, <laughs> and when we skate in Team Viola. <laughs> Yes, we did. Had a little brief skate together at some point. Amazing. And Dari, you're a member of Team Starlight. Do you want to let us know about your skating journey and the experience you've had um, in different categories as well as senior? Yeah, so I started as well at seven years old um, at our local ice rink. I, uh, my parents enrolled me in the Learn to Skate program. And then I saw the synchronized skating teams like practicing on the other ice rink. And then I saw them and I was just mesmerized. And then I said, I want to do this too. So I stayed. Um, I skated for Cool Dreams before I went or before I joined uh, Starlight. I skated with their juvenile novice, junior and also senior team. And um, after two seasons on the senior team, we didn't find enough skaters for um, the team. So I went back to the junior team, skated another two seasons there. And now I'm on my third season on Starlight Elite in Zurich. Amazing. And obviously you both have said, um, I know Dylan, you mentioned about figure skating. Was there any thing that made you think synchro is definitely what I want to do? Or is it you were quite happy to still do both? Was there something that dragged you to synchro in the end? Uh, I I always prefer to do uh, synchronized skating. But when I was young, uh, I did not know really well synchronized skating. So it was my dream to be like Brian Joubert or Philippe Candeloro, uh, like in France. So I began the two things at the same time. And no, I'm happy to be now a, a complete synchronized skater. Uh, figure skating has helped me most that for uh, have a stronger uh, skating skills, uh, individual skating skills. Amazing. Yeah, and the same for you, really, Dario. Was there anything, I knew you said you saw it and you were quite mesmerized by it. Was that what made you think this is what I want to do? Yeah, but I also did um, single skating too at the beginning. But our club doesn't really have a lot of options to do for mm -hmm. single skating. So I just stayed with synchronized skating. Dylan and Dario are some of the familiar faces within our synchro community and are some of the few male skaters that we have. I thought it would be an amazing opportunity to discuss the main differences they face competing in a female dominant sport, but also the things that they really enjoy about it. Is there anything in particular that you both think has stood out while competing in synchronized skating surrounded by female skaters? 
for me my personally when I, when I skate with girl uh, with a woman it's not a big difference because we did we done the same things on the ice and we are when we skate it's like a family we are we are the same it's more like outside of the skating world that we have, we can see the difference with people that don't know the sport and that have more like uh, sexism discussion like you are with girls you are lucky or if you are a guy and we skate with girls you are gay like really big stereotypes like that for me but when we are when we skate with girls in synchronized skating uh, world i don't feel a big difference about that uh, we are more recognizable yeah we totally agree i think we don't know anything different than that and we just like kind of grew up together and yeah we're just like a family and so i mean if you're with your cousins of the other gender or something like that it's no big deal at all and i i think it's something like this yeah and also with the outside world that sometimes like or people that are not familiar with mixed sports are like how can you how can you be in the same team with different gender and stuff like that so mm -hmm. yeah Amazing. Yeah, because I think there's definitely a lack of knowledge of synchro um, yeah. in the world, which is one of the reasons as well. I, I wanted to have um, male skaters as my first guests um, because people don't really know what synchro is. And they would when you say ice skating, they'd automatically kind of think female skaters or women skaters. So I think it was really nice to pick out some of the things that um, you guys go through or face or feel skating in a female dominant sport and just bring the awareness of that. Um, but I definitely have a couple of things now that I want your ideas on. Um, so in regards to costumes, do you like to match and blend in or do you prefer to be a little bit different? So do you like your top half to be the same as the girls' dresses or do you like to be all in one colour? What's your thoughts on our costumes when skating? I think it depends on, on the whole theme of the programme. Sometimes it's like better to stand out and sometimes it's better to fit in. And it also depends on like the girls' dresses. On the upper part, is it like um, somehow possible to wear the same or do they have yeah some i don't know there is the back open or something like that which would not be a typical dress for a man mm -hmm. yeah. for me it's uh, the same it's, it depends of the topics if uh, the, uh, it's a topic for example it's uh, romeo and juliet of course the the, the the costume will be different but uh, when the the team uh the team is uh the, is like uh for us for the free program it's uh about uh being uh deaf so it's not uh it's not uh, a problem to be as a, the same costume as the girls and uh we we have maybe we have pens pens so but we need to match as much as possible with the dress with the girls have either of you ever skated in a program where the girls have worn jumpsuits, so they haven't had dresses and you've completely matched? Yeah, uh, one year it was for Blues Brothers, so it, it was a, a jumpsuit for the girl. So it was almost the same thing. It mm -hmm. was quite uh, good to see it. Yeah, definitely. Amazing. I haven't. You never have? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but there's definitely been a, quite a few at some point where... Like Dylan said, he's had some definitely around. Now, the next one is being highlighted. Whether you've ever skated in a program where you as the male skater has been highlighted or if you've ever watched a team they, that you enjoy or just a competition that's been highlighted, do you like the aspect of highlighting the male skater or do you like blending in with everyone else and skating as one <coughs> without? Um, in Les Zulus, uh, we did it a lot uh, Few years ago, that the guys were I liked a lot, but uh, personally, I prefer that everyone can be highlighted because we have mm -hmm. all skates, uh, all skills to to we can show every everyone have uh, something to show. I completely agree. I think it also depends on the situation. For example, in the short program, there is usually not a much uh, is not much of highlighting. 
Mm-hmm. And for the free skate, there's usually a lot of highlighting and everyone should just do whatever they can or like, yeah, they're good at. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And do you sometimes feel, um, cause I know in my team, there's no boys, there's just girls. So when we do want to highlight, say, for example, in our free program, when we have more time, uh, we choose the people that might have skills or tricks. Do you ever feel somewhat pressured into being the ones that have to have tricks to be highlighted or? Do you f- feel like that's that's not a problem for you and yourself and your team? Mm, I think there's some kind of pressure to be, not to be better than the girls, but you have to be more sure in what you do. Also during like the whole program, because you obviously stick out more. Yeah. So the attention could be more easily on you. So mm-hmm. you have to be somehow, yeah, sure and good at what you're doing. I think. Yeah, because when we, if uh, we, uh, if we done bad, if if we uh, done bad with what we need to show uh, during or highlight, it's like a little bit of shame. So uh, in, when I I did a program when uh, I need to do uh, to do an Excel. I had a little pressure to do the accent, but it's mm-hmm. it, it, uh, that was easy for me at this moment, but it was little pressure. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Well, thank you for those answers. And then the last one that I've got, we have seen it before in a couple of teams. I don't know if you guys have done it in your own teams, but do you prefer being lifted or if you were to be the one to do lifts in the free program? <clears throat> I'd rather do the lifts. <laughs> Uh, I bet I prefer to be uh, to do the lift too. I never been uh, lifted at, in a program. I tried it, mm-hmm. but uh, I prefer <laughs> to be to to lift the girls. To be the lifted. Amazing. In Cool Dreams Junior, we once did a little vault in a transition. So I was the uh, the one being lifted. Mm-hmm. It was kind of special, and I also think like the the. Uh, Pop, uh, the spectators and stuff like that they liked it so mm-hmm. it's always yeah a highlight if you listen more carefully to the Juro Central podcast then to what your coach is saying wait that's not possible right With the three of us today having many years of skating experience, we do also come from different backgrounds, meaning the ways in which we've learned to skate and learn synchro do slightly differ. Thinking about that, I thought it would be a cool way to discuss some of our favourite skills and tricks and also exercises and share those with the best of our ability. Dario, is there any skills or exercises you've learned over the years that you do every time without fail and that you put into your best practice every time you skate? Hmm, good question. Um, so during summer, we worked quite a lot with Nadine Banholzer. Um, she skated with Nexus. She's mm-hmm. a Swiss skater, and we did a lot of basic skating skills, just like for gliding and edges and stuff like that. And I think this really like helped or like helped my helped my skating to progress with just like the basic just pushes or gliding and yeah clean edges and stuff like that or knee work Mm -hmm. yeah would you say that's one of your favorite things to do is the basics and going back to the start and breaking it all down to your basic skating yeah i think so because if you're like doing your programs with all the um step sequences and twizzles and stuff it's also kind of nice to go back to the basics and to see that you still have a lot to work on the mm-hmm. basics. Yeah. Amazing. And Dylan, what about yourself? Uh, it can also be exercises you may have learned that helps with the jobs of skaters when doing um, elements. So it could be an exercise that helps with elements or it could be an exercise that helps with your basic skills. Yeah, <clears throat> for us, uh, we have a lot. Uh, we have a Canadian uh, influence as well. With uh, we had uh, Anne Shelters from Nexus who comes uh, and give us some exercises for skating skills, and uh, we had also Cathy Dalton, uh, the former uh, coach of uh, Black Ice, 
uh, who went also for skating skills and for creating a little bit of the program. But uh, right now, the the most uh, the exercise that we help us the most is with the metronome. And it's uh, it's kind of boring. It's like because it's the same song, uh, the same uh, sound all the way. But we it's like that. We can work on every count and between every count too to be sure that everyone is uh, is at the same time and at the same movement. So it's it's like it's um, it's on the short part of the program, like the step sequence and on the normal element, and we uh, cut everything to be sure that everything is or is uh, synchronized. Amazing. And I know you've both mentioned that you have worked with specialist coaches or old coaches of other teams at times. Uh, Dylan, have you ever skated with a coach or been coached by a coach that you feel has made an impact on yourself or has been one of your favourites that you'd like to work with again? Uh, yeah, when I was in a novice team and I was 14, is there, uh, Marine, Marine Langlois, the coach of Les Supremes, comes in France and show us how to, to skate, uh, and, uh, show us the, for me, that was the first time that I saw synchronized exercises and she, and she uh, helped me to be more comfortable with myself and, and, uh, to skate with the other one. And uh, there was also a choreographer uh, who called uh, Laurie May. She is French. She uh, she helped us to be more comfortable with our body. That was uh, is uh, the first instrumental that you we use on ice and on the floor to to dance. Amazing. And Dario, the same question for you. Is there any coaches or specialist guests that you've worked with that have really, really helped you in your synchro career? Um, in the past, we have worked with several um, coaches also like um, from abroad. For example, um, Gert Hoffmann from Germany or Andrea Gilardi from Italy. And, um, I, and I think all of them helped us in some kind of way. Everyone showed us like different exercises and different approaches on how to do things. And I think from all of these experience, we just like took the best things out of it that helped us the most and included that into our routine. Yeah. To make progress. Mm-hmm. And I think like every coach I have met in my career, so to say, has helped me in some kind of way to progress and to become the skater I have become. Amazing. Now, the last really little question on this one is, other than the skating skills we do on the ice, um, whether it's our exercises four elements or basic skills or tricks, is there anything that your team does outside of the rink, um, whether that is fitness, ballet? Um, you know, sometimes I've seen teams do some meditation or yoga type of um, exercises. Is there anything that your team does specifically that you think is a massive help with your skating? Uh, we done some yoga s- session too, and uh, we also uh, ask some uh, dancer that is specialized on what we we need to do on the ice to come mm-hmm. and to help us on choreography. But I think it's uh, the same in other teams. <laughs> but uh, I think it's a big thing to do when we have a. St- uh, a choreography based, based on special dance because, uh, um, for example, on the workshop program, it's about Africa. So we need to, uh, to dance like, uh, like mm-hmm. the African dance. Amazing. And I have the same question for you. Yeah, we also have dance classes and like of regular fitness classes, boot camp classes, stuff like that. Um, mental training stuff like that meditation but um this season we started working with a broadway actor and i think this really helped us like to um portray our feelings and emotions better into our programs so Mm -hmm. yeah this really helped us this season the juro synchro Podcast. podcast it's the final part To wrap up this episode, I think it's time we have a little game and finish with the Synchro Knowledge Quiz. 
I'm going to ask you both five questions、um, relating to the history of synchro to see who really is the king of synchro. <laughs> Now, I will be starting off easy, but there will be no clues or hints to help you. You are all on your own,、um, but beware there are some bonus points for you guys as well. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Question one is: Where was the 2016 World Championships held? Budapest. Budapest. Do you want to answer? Yeah,、Dario? I'll to think it was in Budapest. Okay. Let's have a, let's have a look. You are correct. <laughs> so that is one point to Dylan. You can have a bonus point to see who won that Worlds that year. Paradise. There you go. <laughs> no fight for Dylan or be in the lead. <laughs> That's okay. We got some time to catch up. So the second question is: What country skated the themed short program Vogue in the 2019 World Championships in Finland? You came from Canada. Oh, <laughs> Dario.、Mm, I would say the Chinese team. I do have it down as China. No, I don't know whether Supran did it as well. You might have to check my answers, but I'm going to give the point to Dario for this one. <laughs> okay, still in the lead, Dylan, but still got some points to catch up with. So, question three: What country has hosted the most World Championships and a bonus point for the year of the first ever Worlds? Tough one. <laughs> mm, definitely. Maybe Sweden. Yeah, we'll be、okay. Sweden too. You want to guess Sweden? The answer is America. Now I did have a little look. Sweden weren't too far behind, but America have hosted the most.、Um, do you want to guess at when the first ever Worlds was? What year that was? Minneapolis. The first one. Yes. Minneapolis. What year? Minneapolis. In two thousand two, two thousand and two, two thousand zero zero. It was two thousand.、Oh, yes, it、okay. was the millennium. Was the first ever world. These are quite hard questions.、Yeah. I do apologise. No problem. <laughs> so that's Adela on three and Dario on one. You can still catch up. So question four is: What year did Synchro originate in? And can you tell me what it was called before synchronized ice skating? This is a very hard question. Precision skating.、Um, it was, yeah. Oh, you got another one. I think it was founded in the 1950s or 60s. I'll give you that point because it is in 1956, and it was precision pre precision skating. Yes, amazing. So, point each on that one. Okay, and the last question, probably the most important question, this one: What team do I skate for? Icicles, Team Icicles. Yes, I'll give you both a point for that one. <laughs> well, I can rest. <laughs> Amazing. So the scores, I believe, if I've counted correctly, still on five, down on three. Oh, well done!、Yeah. Thank you for the quiz. Congratulations, <laughs> Dylan. You are <laughs> synchro for this episode. <laughs> Amazing. Do you want to take a bow? Cheer for. The King of Synchro. <laughs> Thank you both for joining me on today's episode. It's been amazing to have you.、Uh, next week, the Express Show starts again, and then we'll be back with another episode with Jocelyn. So, bye for now, and thank you both for joining me on today's podcast. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Jura Synchro Podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. The musical theme of this show was created by Scatmix.pro and Carl Hugo.